The earliest moments of Vegeta growing up, as we all know, was during Freeze's reign. He was just a kid back then, very young, very arrogant, and can we blame him? He was part of the Warrior Saiyan race, with fighting and strength in their blood. They were space pirates, who showed no mercy. You had to be tough to survive. Combine that with him being stronger than his father, and having royalty in his blood, and in his head, destined for greatness, and you can see why a Saiyan kid would be an arrogant little prick. We can say he was also bitter and held many negative feelings knowing Frieza ruled his race, and that one day he would be the one to defeat Frieza. Can you imagine living like that every day? You'd know nothing of kindness, nothing of love and care, all he was driven by was his Saiyan DNA to get stronger and his desire to become the strongest and kill Frieza in the end. Now, take all those feelings and multiply that by the number of years he lived and by the time we get to the Saiyan saga of Dragon Ball Z, we get a near 30 year old bitter, passively angry asshole Vegeta who has killed many people over the course of his life. Would we expect anything less? Absolutely not. Some of his cruel actions and decisions definitely had himself to blame. But look at the way he was treated by Frieza and his army, losing his race. And I will talk more about that in a moment about how it affected him, because when he cried during his death, all those suppressed feelings came out. They truly did hurt him deep down, no matter how much bravado he used to cover it up along the way. Like when he said he didn't care about his father or race to do Doria. We have to understand, Vegeta says heartless things in front of his opponents to make himself look dominating and intimidating. He doesn't want emotion to make him look weak. But Vegeta is a mortal being. He has feelings, as seen throughout Dragon Ball Z. It's just the first 30 years of living really made him lock away his own feelings into the dark corner of his mind where he was potentially too scared to access them in case he broke down. I believe the only way Vegeta coped mentally for that 30 years of living under Freezer was to act like an asshole, was to be a ruthless being and to keep on fighting to take his mind off the pain. And you know, he did that for so long. So of course he cared about his Saiyan race. The entire Vegeta character in Dragon Ball is non-stop about his Saiyan pride and it's rammed down our throat every single battle. Let's go back to the Saiyan Saga before Vegeta even fights Goku. Goku overwhelms Nappa and Vegeta admits that at this rate, he's going to have to step in. Vegeta was expecting Nappa to deal with all the obstacles there. That's how highly he regarded his own rank as a Saiyan Prince. Which makes sense, why should he get his hands dirty with low level scum, right? But when Goku and Vegeta stand ready to fight, important panels show themselves and reveal exactly how Vegeta perceives Goku. He doesn't believe his elite self should ever be lowered to play with a low class warrior. He also laughs at Goku thinking even a low class warrior can surpass an elite if they work hard enough. Basically this is the foundation of Vegeta's mindset in this battle and how much pride he has relating to his Saiyan power that must not be made a joke of by a low class. This is all very important. Base to base, Goku admits Vegeta is superior to him and Vegeta isn't even trying. He hasn't powered up yet. That's when Goku is forced to use a Kaioken attack which doesn't even match Vegeta's suppressed base form. Vegeta powers up and Goku's base form is completely outmatched. It's at this point when Goku decides to use a Kaioken times 3 pushing his body past its regular limits at the cost of damaging himself. Goku has to use a godly technique to even keep up with Vegeta's regular base power which is more of a cheat code than Vegeta's natural Uzaru power later on. At this point, Vegeta has already won this fight in terms of Saiyan potential. Goku and King Kai state Goku's already lost unless he gambles his own health further. Now Vegeta's anger of being overwhelmed by the Kaioken times 3 stems from the fact Goku is a low class warrior and that Vegeta's an elite Saiyan. It's not just because Goku is strong. It's all to do with their ranking system. But still, Vegeta endures the punishment and Goku is worried that his own body will give out before Vegeta is even defeated. Goku is still losing overall, but Vegeta is losing mentally through his Saiyan pride and ranking system. He's angry that his noble blood is being poured thanks to trash. But even in their beam struggle, Vegeta matches the Kaioken times 3 Kamehameha, proving his base power is still a beast. And that's where Goku sacrifices his entire game by using the Kaioken times 4, which doesn't even defeat Vegeta. It's at this point, Vegeta could have actually won by attrition if he wasn't blinded by anger, but his fury of being topped by a low class warrior pushes him to become an Uzaru. Remember, at this point, Vegeta can't even sense power levels. He doesn't know how much weakened Goku has become thanks to the Kaioken times 4. Vegeta would think the Kaioken times 4 power is currently Goku's power and cannot be matched unless Vegeta powers up further. It's at this point some call Vegeta a cheater for using the Uzaru despite everything Goku had just done to him using godly techniques that were taught to him by a god that just ruined his own body so much that he's now at his limit. The difference with the Kaioken and the Uzaru is that the Uzaru is a natural Saiyan power up. 
It's why the Saiyans like Vegeta refer to the tail as the key to a Saiyan's true potential. It's not cheating by using that true natural potential. This is a huge battle against someone spamming a godly technique that isn't supposed to be pushing his body past that limit. The Kaioken is completely unnatural and forced upon Goku's regular power. The Uzaru is absolutely allowed. This is a Saiyan battle. It would be no different than a warrior using Super Saiyan, which let's be honest, is more of a cheat code in multipliers and even concept at this point in the story, as it's seen as a legendary state that apparently turns up every 1000 years. That would be a cheat code. The Uzaru is part of the package deal with all Saiyans as long as they have their tails. Just because they are 100 feet tall or whatever doesn't make it a cheat. What confuses some here is Vegeta's hatred about becoming the Uzaru. Vegeta does not hate becoming the Uzaru because it's cheating. He hates the fact it's Kakarot, a low-class warrior, forcing the strongest Saiyan, the Prince, to use his dormant Saiyan potential. In his mind, this power should be used for the big fish. Vegeta lives by the ranking system. It's everything to him at this time. The anger is expected when a commoner forces the Prince to work hard. Again, the whole theme of this battle. A low level achieving great power by working hard to get it. Vegeta is not cheating, but it's Vegeta swallowing his pride and being humbled in battle. A complete learning experience to never underestimate his opposition no matter where they came from or what they were graded at at birth. Even after the Uzaru, Vegeta had a lot of fight left in him. His fury at Kakarot's low class power made him make silly decisions. One being, using up most of his power to create an artificial moon to become the Uzaru. If Vegeta kept his cool, it would have been over much sooner. Nevertheless, the tougher Vegeta uses his natural Saiyan power to overcome the cheat code Kaioken spammer and crushes Goku's self-inflicted damaged body like an unwanted charity leaflet. Did Goku cheat? He did get trained by a god to learn godly techniques, right? Getting that opportunity after death to specifically prepare for Vegeta is definitely a helping hand to get where he was at. I'm torn about this because Goku did work hard to achieve his new 8000 base power, as well as harness different techniques on King Kai's planet, but in the same respect, Vegeta had worked hard his whole life to become as strong as he did and also trained himself to control the rationale of the Great Ape. It wasn't just some mindless form that wasn't Vegeta. No, Vegeta harnessed his natural Saiyan power and that takes skill and is far from cheating. He's earned the right to use the Uzaru. The only thing Vegeta didn't succeed in doing was finishing off Kakarot the way he wanted because he lost the war against multiple opponents who interfered all to save Goku. But when it came to the one versus one battle, Goku lost. If you want to call Vegeta a cheater, the only thing he kind of betrayed was his own rulebook of not using his full power against a low class warrior due to a pride issue. That's the preference, but it's not a cheat as a warrior in a battle overall. True warriors fight to win and rise up against challenges using their potential. And that's what he did. He used his true Saiyan potential. There's no rulebook saying you can't use certain forms to fight otherwise it's cheating. That's like preventing 90% of Dragon Ball fights from ever happening. Don't blame Vegeta for looking after his tail and using the Uzaru, his natural pathway to power. Goku chose his pathway and then went on to learn the godly Kaioken long after losing his Saiyan tail pathway. And it all still failed against the superior Saiyan Prince. When he came to Earth and fought Goku and the gang, this was the beginning of Vegeta's change in attitude, albeit a very small one. Even though Vegeta would have crushed Goku alone, the fact that Vegeta was pummeled nearly to death put a massive dent to his ego. He could not believe it. To him, it was all about elite Saiyans, but that obviously meant nothing anymore. But did this change his feelings towards Goku and the others? No, it didn't. To him, he was still burning with desire to even the playing field when he heals back up. But when Goku showed Vegeta mercy and Krillin didn't go for the kill, this, I believe, planted a seed in Vegeta's mind to allow him to grow internally. It wouldn't show right away, because on planet Namek, he was still a complete prick. His ego was slightly damaged, but nothing he couldn't repair. But deep down, that act of mercy would soon grow through the events of planet Namek. Seeing Vegeta squash Dodoria and Zarbon was great, but despite them being villains, that doesn't make Vegeta a hero yet. It was villain versus villain and it was great. Both sides had their own selfish desires. During Vegeta's hunt for the Dragon Balls, he would still kill anyone in his way, even Bulma if he wanted to. Just the distractions by Zarbon stopped him. 
but due to the Dragon Balls being a top priority, he let Krillin and Bulma live that one time. It just depends what side of the bed he woke up on. He knew Krillin was no issue to him there, and so he just continued with his mission. But that's not to say he wouldn't just do it. He's still the same Vegeta as on Earth. Maybe at this point we could argue he's just getting even for when Krillin spared his life. That's just a theory, as he doesn't want to be in anyone's debt. But even Krillin said it's a miracle they are still alive. If you want to stay alive against Vegeta back then, just don't be a threat to him. And this is backed up because he did give a number of hours to the Earthlings in waiting for Kakarot to arrive. So he's not just a murder-hungry warrior for no reason. Throughout the course of Namek, Vegeta would begin to change ever so slightly, and that mainly came down to the circumstances, with there being many more threats such as the Ginyu Force and Frieza. Vegeta deep down didn't care about Gohan and Krillin, but he knew he had to work with them to survive. Furthermore, when Goku arrived, he basically knew he was at Goku's mercy due to the power difference, he swallowed his pride and continued his quest. It may have seemed like he was acting like the good guy for this part of Namek, but the truth was, he wasn't. He still had his selfish motives. He just allied with Goku and the gang to take down the bigger threat. Killing Goku was still something he wanted to do later down the line, and it was Vegeta's drive for this Super Saiyan legend that kept him ticking, kept his adrenaline high through all of the Namek struggles against Frieza. When Frieza entered his second form and crushed Gohan on the ground, we could even see Vegeta's true feelings then. He still didn't care if Gohan died. He still had his selfish goals in mind, and that is the show of a villain. But we could start to say Vegeta had now become the anti-villain, as Frieza was the larger threat. However, he wasn't good-spirited. The ultimate turning point of Vegeta came when he realized he wasn't a Super Saiyan. The confidence, ego, adrenaline, excitement just all vanished, and he was left with an empty vessel of a body no longer able to suppress the pain he's endured all his life. Realizing after all of this, he is still Frieza's possession. Vegeta's spirit was crushed, but because he could no longer hold all that pain and suffering back with that ego, he poured out all those feelings to Goku whilst he was dying. He placed his faith in Goku to be the Super Saiyan. Hell, he didn't like Goku in the slightest, but his Saiyan race and pride meant everything to him. And because Goku was the last remaining Saiyan, that was better to beat Frieza than no Saiyan at all. His heartbreaking speech came out, telling Goku about the way he grew up and why he's a cold bastard. Goku felt the pain of Vegeta and could see that Vegeta didn't want that life deep down. He was forced into it. It was like Vegeta was trying to escape himself, but he couldn't. The years of acting strong and merciless provided Vegeta with that shield to cope with life. His dying wish for Kakarot to beat Frieza was the beginning of peace between Goku and Vegeta. At least on a physical level when Vegeta came back to life, he still played on that destroying Kakarot thing. But I believe after the events of Namek, he didn't want to kill Kakarot anymore, but his goal was just to beat him so bad that he can show that he is the great Saiyan. I think the killing Kakarot motive ended after Namek personally. And that is backed up because when he is on Earth, for the brief time after Namek, at least in the anime, Vegeta could have easily mopped the floor with Gohan and Piccolo, but after whipping Gohan in the little backyard brawl, he did indeed back off when Piccolo intervened. This showed me that Vegeta was still a jerk, would still beat your ass, but he had those memories of fighting alongside Gohan and Piccolo, and it was that small respect he had for them that stopped him going for the kill. He would never show that little bit of respect to them, but you knew it was there deep down, and it was always shown between him and Piccolo in a weird way. They loved to hate each other. But the evil side of Vegeta was slowly diminishing. He was growing into a new man. In the times of peace, he was driven by the internal goal of becoming a Super Saiyan, and rightfully so. That's a legend that has been embedded into his head since he was a child. And after seeing Goku as a Super Saiyan, he damn right believes he deserves that even more. Now, between the time after teleporting from Namek to the point Trunks arrives, Vegeta undergoes the pink Badman arc. And in this arc, I will honestly say that was a massive deal to his character, which continued to encourage his personality to go from a villain to a hero. He was nowhere near a hero at this point, but you couldn't label him as a villain either because he met the Earthlings, experienced their way of life, and actually in a selfish way, found use of Earth by using its facilities, probably eating a ton of its food, sleeping in a peaceful bed at night. Vegeta was changing, he was becoming accustomed to Earth's way. But the biggest change to his personality was due to the fact he was surrounded by peaceful people for that duration. Bulma, Yamcha, Bulma's family, and many more. Bulma always showed him kindness. Sure, she was annoying at times, but when he hurt himself in training, she would care for him. And I feel that kindness of Bulma, meeting Bulma, was one of the biggest things to impact Vegeta's life. Think of how much of a difference that would be to your mood instead of being surrounded by Zabon and Dodoria on a daily basis. Yeah, a big deal. It was almost like the true Vegeta, deep down, was starting to awake, but it wasn't quite there yet. The arrogant prince with a lust for power was still in the driver's seat of his personality, but his kill at will personality, I believe that had fizzled out. His first time transformation was that of a different motive from Goku or Trunks. Where Trunks and Goku had rage, 
for the loss of their friend, and needed the form to cope with the struggle ahead, Vegeta's was indeed a struggle, but he needed this form to reach the top of the mountain again, and for his own personal motives, albeit worked. But this doesn't take away from Vegeta's transformation into a Super Saiyan because there was a massive build-up for Vegeta. The fact that on Namek, he thought he was a Super Saiyan, he died in a horrible struggle against Frieza, then he got revived and he was the one who saw Goku as the Super Saiyan. This all built up, then his time on Earth, trying to learn the secret behind it and to top it off, seeing his future son turn into a Super Saiyan with Goku made Vegeta feel totally left out with a loss of pride as he was the Prince of All Saiyans. Finally, his breakdown in space when he didn't care anymore after all the pain and training made him snap, and this fitted Vegeta's character perfectly. Vegeta and Future Trunks went into the Room of Spirit and Time. They went in first in order to train and break the Super Saiyan wall, come out stronger than ever in hopes of defeating the android threat at the time. As we are all very well aware, Vegeta and Trunks both ascended, both able to use what has been labelled Super Saiyan Grade 2 and 3. And although Vegeta used Grade 2 against Cell, he knew the speed and stamina issues with using Grade 3, which is why he didn't focus on it. Trunks, on the other hand, went balls deep against Cell and tested the Grade 3, which was a complete failure. However, after the failure of defeating Cell, Vegeta and Trunks returned to the lookout awaiting the return of Goku and Gohan from the Room of Spirit and Time, and to everyone's shock, they leave much earlier, and didn't spend the whole year inside. Now bearing in mind, before everyone entered the time chamber, you can argue that Vegeta was stronger than Goku based on certain dialogue, but typically the fandom likes to see Goku and Vegeta around the same level of Super Saiyan power before they both entered the training. Also, with Future Trunks, I believe it's implied that his Super Saiyan power was not the same levels as Goku or Vegeta during the early Android fights. But Goku and Gohan had left the time chamber showcasing a mastery of Super Saiyan, which when fully powered up, would be referred to as the Mastered Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan Grade 4. And in order to achieve this, Goku and Gohan had learned how to stay transformed as a regular Super Saiyan 24-7, or at least when they are awake. Not focusing on the Grade 2 or 3 variants, but strictly focusing on basic Super Saiyan mastery, which in turn made Goku and Gohan overcome the wild emotional roller coaster of being a Super Saiyan, as well as conserving a ton of stamina when fighting as a Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan had pretty much become their new base form. Coming out of the time chamber, Vegeta and the others speculate to what is going on. Vegeta couldn't even feel their energy. But the question none of them asked is, how did they do it? So then we would learn Vegeta and Future Trunks would both go inside the time chamber for another year, where Goku made it pretty clear he would not be going back in with Gohan. To everyone's shock, he mentions there's no point going in this stressing the body like torture. That's not actually training. But after Vegeta comes out from another trip, in the anime at least, Piccolo mentions Vegeta has grown stronger, but it's still not enough. In the Japanese original, I believe Piccolo just looks at him and then goes back to meditating as if to say, big deal, not impressed. Now, based on their performance in the Cell games, Vegeta and Future Trunks both feel and perform at a similar level of power. It would be hard to tell the difference between them, but both fall far short of Goku and Gohan in their Super Saiyan forms, despite going in the time chamber a second time. So where did it all go wrong for Vegeta and Trunks? Why could they not achieve the mastered Super Saiyan Grade 4, or not even rival Goku and Gohan in terms of raw power at least? After good old-fashioned raw Saiyan punishment training, despite their power going in the second time was far greater than themselves and Goku going in the first time. Now, first of all, we all know the main reason for Goku and Gohan getting stronger ready for the Cell games, and that was for the plot. To allow Goku and Gohan to have their big fights with Cell, seeing as Vegeta and Trunks already had them. Going into train for a second time, Vegeta had a few main goals. Surpass Kakarot because it's Android Saga Vegeta. Also, to defeat Cell, and finally to get stronger because he's a Saiyan Prince with insecure pride issues. You would assume his motivation was there. It was. So seeing Kakarot in this tranquil state, seemingly mastering the Super Saiyan power at rest, this had to annoy Vegeta. Kakarot has done it again. But even though he realized it was a way to get stronger, being the prince and wanted to do things his own way, you could bet that reason number one Vegeta didn't achieve this master Super Saiyan form was because he did not want to copy Kakarot due to his pride. This was the result of Kakarot's training. In his head, he would not succumb or seek that way of training like him. He wants results his own way, and you could see Vegeta going about his training his way, in a very stubborn way, being ignorant to what really counts at this point in the training. And that was the focus on conserving power and mastering the state of being a Super Saiyan, focusing on being a great all-round fighter, not just becoming very strong. I like that theme of the Cell games. 
Even though just getting stronger is the win condition in Dragon Ball typically. But I still like that theme. Vegeta went into the time chamber to train the same way he always does, in believing that would be enough if he gets another big increase like he did the first time around. However, he was wrong. Despite getting somewhat stronger, the increase was not as impactful as the first time, and this could lead to another reason at that time in the story for Vegeta, and that was his actual raw power potential was probably maxed out during that time in terms of training like a brute. If he kept training like he was, raising his power like in grade 2 or 3, he's going to just raise raw brute power, but in terms of being an all-round fighter, an efficient fighter, there was so much more to it that the story was implying at that time, not just brute power. And also the story just generally hyping up Gohan's hidden potential like it's the best of the lot of them. Dragon Ball Z's story focused on that since day one. Anyway, Vegeta wanted to get strong his way, but it failed to surpass the way Kakarot trained. Maybe Vegeta tried a different way to get stronger, but that failed. Being proud here was a big weakness. Which leads us to this reason, the actual practice and technique or being able to master Super Saiyan, where Vegeta may have not at that time been able to do it. Think about it. Tranquil and Android Saga Vegeta do not go hand in hand. Vegeta had a massive chip on his shoulder, his anxiety was through the roof, he was angry, he was irritable, he just wanted to rage out and get strong. Let's say Vegeta did try to master Super Saiyan whilst in the time chamber. The way he transforms is through a lot of self-hatred and general anger. To put a lid on all of that would take Vegeta a lot more effort than it would take Goku. Remember, Goku had training on Yajirat controlling his spirit after he became a Super Saiyan on Namek, being able to balance on the mountain peak as calm as a still lake. Goku was the type of warrior who had inner peace, and mastering Super Saiyan would come second nature to him, and was probably an extension of what he learned on Yadrat, because we all know he was ready to ascend the moment he woke up from the heart virus issue. For Vegeta to stay in a state of his angered, fueled Super Saiyan, this would be extremely difficult, so perhaps he did actually try it inside the time chamber, but when he realized this way of growing was just not for him, and that it would take far too long to get used to it, he probably would have resorted back to his old, raw, basic principles. So another reason I want to bring up is the fact that Goku and Gohan worked together, whereas Vegeta and Trunks did not. Goku and Gohan going into the training of Master and Super Saiyan would both have had similar kind heart in natures, which is a bonus, but both would be able to support each other and keep each other motivated to make sure they did their best every day to stay in that form as long as possible when it felt like they were about to give up. You could also argue because two Saiyan potentials would train against each other, this would grow their power much faster than if one trained alone, similar to how Vegeta and Trunks trained alone. Just through two Saiyans fighting each other passively and growing through battle every day, a one one time trip would have been more than enough than two solo trips, which makes you wonder, what if Vegeta and Trunks worked together, battled together daily and actually supported each other rather than there being a distance between them? It makes you wonder, character wise anyway, if they had the potential to grow as much as Goku and Gohan, which they obviously did due to bloodlines, but plot. And it makes you wonder what if Goku and Gohan went in a second time, but maybe at that point in the story it was implying both of them had hit their raw power peak anyway. Being of similar hybrid nature to Gohan, and unquestionably having far more motivation to defeat the androids, the only reasons you can say Trunks didn't achieve mastery of Super Saiyan or hell, even Super Saiyan 2, was due to plot but mostly due to training alone and being someone with actually very poor training experience and history, as well as not being very perceptive. Think about it, Trunks is a guy who had a brief moment of training with future Gohan. Ever since then, he ran away and hid every day of his life and suffered extreme pain. He may do a few sword chops here and there in the mountains but really, what experience of training does this guy have? Absolutely low amounts. The only times he saw someone train intensely for a long period of time was watching his own father train inside the time chamber, which if you think about it, all he did was pick up on things visually, and trying to learn something from someone as hot-headed and angry as Vegeta is not going to be the best way of learning. Trunks went into the time chamber a second time, still with limited training experience, and probably just trained in a raw Saiyan punishment training procedure just like before. Imagine Goku went into the time chamber with Trunks, and the story called for Trunks to be the one to defeat Perfect Cell. This hybrid is going places, bro. In a nutshell, Vegeta and Trunks trained harder, but Goku and Gohan trained smarter. Those two didn't know how to properly train to the same degree as Goku did. This is a key difference between them all. Vegeta was born strong and even as a child, rarely encountered anyone he couldn't overwhelm by brute force. He neither wanted in his pride nor had much access to any teachers to guide him. Most of what he knows is self-taught or through imitation. He doesn't humble himself to the point of asking someone to teach him until Whis. Goku was born weak and in his early years encountered many 
many friends, foes alike, who were actually stronger than him at times. As such, he learned there was something to be gained through learning from others and was receptive to teaching. He was also fortunate in having many good teachers, good not only at fighting but also good at teaching. Trunks had the misfortune of not having access to good teachers, as all decent candidates were dead in his timeline. The training from Gohan was minimal. You might notice that when Goku and Gohan were training, Goku used his knowledge to bring out Gohan's in potential, and then used Gohan as an effective training partner to bring out his own strength. Like I said, Trunks and Vegeta didn't get that much training time together. Vegeta ignored Trunks most of the time, and this reduced the effectiveness of their training, and was a much less efficient way of exploiting their inner Saiyan growth abilities. And this is a popular theme in Goku and Vegeta's rivalry. Vegeta works much harder and trains much more intensely than Goku, but still cannot catch up. But that is because Goku trains much more efficiently, because he has been taught how to train and he is humble enough to accept the help of others in the form of instruction as sparring partners. Vegeta in his pride goes it alone and pays the consequence. But during his power growth during the Android and Cell Saga, his pride got smashed numerous times. The same Saiyan pride and appetite that caused a lot of problems. When Cell became perfect and crushed him, I believe he truly started to wake up and see that he wasn't the man he thought he was, and that he should hit himself down a peg to realise the truth about everything. I felt the defeat against Cell and then realising Cell as an absolute monster gave him that extra push towards Vegeta aligning himself with the good guys. In desperation, yes, but also because it felt like it was the right thing. He realised he couldn't do everything alone, and that his help was needed as a team, as much as he hated it. And when he said he's sorry to Gohan, and then attacked Cell in the beam struggle, that really showed us that he had changed. During the beam struggle, you could see Vegeta contemplating everything on the mountain. When he said in the anime, it's not fear that's holding him back, it's just that... And it emphasized that his pride was severely damaged, that he had to lower himself to help in others. But it was the right thing to do and he knew it. Vegeta wasn't truly a hero, but he was no longer a villain either. He was just a wild card that could now see what was right and wrong. His pride had been crushed many times in front of the others. And I feel that his desperation to protect that prideful image now lowered itself because his defeat was already out in the open to see. There was a moment with Vegeta that had a big emotional attachment to me, and that was when Vegeta saw Trunks about to die in front of him. This was a huge character development moment for Vegeta, and I could see Vegeta's pain and frustration, not at Cell, not all at Cell, but to himself as well. That he felt like a failed father figure to his dead son. I don't care if Vegeta's attacks did nothing to Cell, the fact that he let all of his frustration out through a key barrage was enough to give me the chills. And it was during the final beam struggle where Vegeta was struggling to find it in him to help Gohan and the others. The emotional explosion over Trunks' death was the true switch in Vegeta's allegiance and solidified his place on the good side, showing that he had developed feelings inside after being around good people for so long. You could say the good spirit was rubbing off on him. The evil was being cleansed in his heart. There's no doubt about it, Vegeta is one of the most interesting characters in Dragon Ball history with one of the most fascinating character developments, some would say even more intriguing than Piccolo's. Because let's be honest, he basically replaced everything Piccolo was in the first place, and because he's a Saiyan, he gets special treatment. But we all know he never started out as the hero we see him now in Dragon Ball Super. Sure, he still has his grumpy, arrogant ways, but most of him is good-spirited, where when we compare him to his first appearance in Dragon Ball Z during the Saiyan Saga, it's almost like he's a totally different character. Now, a lot of us are just satisfied knowing Vegeta went from a villain to a hero, but what's more important than that is how it happened. One of those areas that Vegeta improved at was becoming a better father to Trunks, but it wasn't always that way. There was a long time in Trunks' life, not just a slice of life happened, Episode, but around eight years where Vegeta was a poor father to Trunks. He wasn't even a dad to him. Where if you unfortunately have to imagine someone neglecting their child up until they were eight years old, you would think that's almost irredeemable no matter how good you do after because that's a long time for a child, the most important years of childhood. When we were introduced to baby Trunks in the Android Saga, Vegeta didn't care about him or Bulma's safety. He only cared about his Super Saiyan power at that point. That's a terrible move as a father right at the beginning. When Vegeta learned about Future Trunks being his son, the only bond of connection they shared was through strength and being strong fighters. The first time Vegeta got it through his head about who Trunks really was and how important he was, was upon Trunks' death at the hands of Cell. Vegeta's rampage was the first moment of realization and the turning point of Vegeta's perception towards his own son and as a father. When Vegeta gave a goodbye to Future Trunks, a change could be seen in Vegeta's 
openness, but as a father, he was far from making up lost time, and the hill was still huge to climb. The father bug in Vegeta was growing in the Buu saga, but Vegeta's stubbornness and pride would prevent that emotional attachment from forming further until the events of Marge and Vegeta's sacrifice. Vegeta didn't train Kid Trunks at all in those seven years. Trunks trained alongside Vegeta and got stronger on his own, which was why Vegeta became surprised at the Super Saiyan bargain sale. He proceeded to punch Trunks and promised a trip to the park, but he doesn't even follow up on the promise until episode 2 of Dragon Ball Super where he tells Bulma about the promise he made to Trunks in the gravity room during the Buu saga that he needs to fulfill. Episode 2 of Dragon Ball Super was a few years after the Buu saga, so a father's promise to go to the park was delayed for that number of years? That may be a script error, but go back and watch episode 2 and you will see the flashbacks and the episode don't do Vegeta's parenting any justice in the long run. Just going to the park comes across as a chore for Vegeta. He still had little interest in being with Trunks unless it was to feel proud about him beating Goku's child, Goten, at the 25th Tenkaichi Budokai. And even then, Vegeta took more of the credit that it was because of his own genetics. He lived the battle through Trunks to fulfill his own desire of being better and best in Kakarot. In some way, the hug before Vegeta died doesn't exactly make him father of the year either. We can't ignore the first eight years of Trunks' life just like that because of one hug. This is Vegeta making a good change, but still an overall terrible father to Trunks, despite Trunks being upset when Vegeta was hurt. That was more to do with Trunks and his connection that he felt towards Vegeta, not the one that Vegeta showed Trunks. Still far from being a real dad right now. Now I know I've mentioned episode 2 of Dragon Ball Super and also the fact Vegeta looked like he was just putting up with the whole day rather than actually enjoying it with his son. But after this moment, it's a constant improvement, at least towards Bulla when she's born. There isn't much slice of life between Kid Trunks and Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super, only the inclination that he cares about their safety by not wanting the boys to compete in the tournament of power. And the care for his son was prioritized over being strong. During the end of Z and also during GT, Vegeta showed a strict attitude towards Trunks about cutting his his allowance in half, it's more to keep Trunks on the sensible path. He's doing it out of love at that point, and I feel this is when Vegeta is truly a dad, at least when it comes to your kids being older. Trunks is much older and he's being spoken to like a man. As mentioned earlier with Vegeta making up for lost time, I feel his bond with Bulla comes into play regarding this. He goes above and beyond for her. You can see that when she's born in Dragon Ball Super, and you definitely see it in Dragon Ball GT. However, the balance with Bulla was off and she became spoilt beyond belief. She was Vegeta's little princess. Needless to say, Vegeta in GT was a peak father, the grumpy loving dad with a mustache. The bond he shares with future Trunks in the Goku Black arc of Dragon Ball Super is one based on respect more than love. Vegeta showed a difference of connection to him than to Kid Trunks. It was more distant. Vegeta really didn't want to get involved with another timeline but he still gets some points there as a family man. Vegeta definitely has one of the greatest developments in Dragon Ball, it's obvious, but is Vegeta a good father overall? Up to the point in the story where we are at, it's a yes and no. Yes, because in Super and GT, even the end of Z, Vegeta did become a better father than the earlier years, prioritizing the children more than he ever did before. An honorable mention to his battle with Topo, that was great, and that solidified where Vegeta's head is in terms of his commitment. So technically, yes, he is a good father now, but it's also a no, because if you put Vegeta's entire history as a father on a timeline, there's a huge red line through the first eight years of Trunks' life, making the overall father score pretty low, where Trunks only got one hug in eight years, which tells you a lot about Vegeta's effort, regardless of how proud he felt about Trunks. What you feel is nowhere near as important as how you show it. Vegeta wasn't a good father or dad to Trunks at all in his early life, but he became a better father over time and eventually became peak dad in Dragon Ball GT. Let's talk about the moment that Vegeta left the battlefield after Cell's defeat. In the manga it says, I'll never fight again. The Dragon Ball Z Japanese dub says pretty much the same thing. Piccolo stays and tries to tell him about how brave his actions were. He doesn't want any help and Piccolo should just leave. And this instantly implies to each of us that he is protecting what little pride he has left. And more importantly, he appears in his own mind that he had to lower himself to being a team player with everyone else. He didn't get his shine, he didn't beat Cell, he just showed emotion at Trunks' death in front of everybody. Gohan, a small boy, saved him and is the strongest Saiyan, and his longtime rival Kakarot 
had just left the battlefield in a heroic effort without fear and left a huge mark on Vegeta. He, if anything, must be feeling depressed to some degree at this moment, as nothing has gone his way as expected. Now, based on what we know and how hard Vegeta trained in those seven years, we can assume that he said what he did there on the battlefield because he was in a high emotional state at that time. As in the seven year time skip, we know he started becoming much more accustomed to the life of Earth, and it was during this time that I truly believe he mentally changed direction. So maybe the first few months of the time skip, he may have indeed not lifted a single weight, but what changed this? Mentally, I feel he was transitioning, and the Vegeta of old, who he used to be, had truly been defeated in his mind, and he started to accept that, where his walls and barriers of emotion started lowering to his family, slowly but surely. We can believe it was a hard pill to swallow for the proud prince, but it was necessary for growth. We could say he would train but never fight again, but as it so happens with Saiyans, they train to battle. I cannot see Goku or Vegeta ever training without being able to test their power at some later time. Let's analyze how he managed to build himself back up to a mentally strong level in time for the Buu Saga. Even though he was mentally defeated during the Cell games, his Saiyan biology would never allow him to stop training. And I absolutely agree. I feel it would be impossible for him to stop being active due to him having training and fighting in his blood, and it's like an impulse. But to get to how strong he was after 7 years, stronger than Super Saiyan 2 Gohan in the Cell games, that would take a certain type of drive for him if we think about it. Nobody is going to get to that level just by casually training. So what was his new drive? Kakarot was no longer there for all he knew. He had no reason to believe Goku would ever come back. We cannot say Vegeta was preparing to one day face against Goku who was training in the other world because that would not make sense. He accepted Goku died and was gone forever, and that was a big kickstart to his change in attitude and values. And it's clearly supported by his reaction to Goku wanting to fight in the tournament later on. Vegeta was in pure shock that Goku was returning. The absence of Goku progressed Vegeta. But before we go there, in the manga, when Gohan reveals he's competing in the tournament, Vegeta says he will make it more interesting and compete also. He also adds in critical dialogue stating, Once you were far more powerful than me, but how about now? I've kept up my training whilst you frolicked in peace. It's also added earlier him saying to Gohan, you look out of shape, never get soft in peacetime. And both of these dialogues give us two clues for his motivation. Number one, Vegeta being the Saiyan that he is loves challenges. And he must have used Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 level of power as a motivator to try and surpass it. After all, he needs that goal in mind and to keep feeding his Saiyan desire for the right reasons. Surpassing Gohan was a major goal for him in the time skip, and is clear when he boasts about his power surpassing him due to him being out of shape. But now, him seeing Gohan out of shape, he clearly accepts that he is now the strongest warrior alive. Him entering the tournament if Gohan did was an indicator at his motives and using his training for a reason. Kakarot joining the tournament was a bonus. He was going to enter anyway despite Goku entering. We must remember that. Goku didn't spark Vegeta's fight in passion. It was already there for seven years but in a new form. Second point, never get soft in peacetime. This is a big clue to who Vegeta became. Formerly, he would train, get stronger all through his life and never really understood or experienced peace. Let's be honest. And now he's lived on Earth for so long, he is also starting to become a father figure. Because once Future Trunks left to go home, he gave him the peace sign or stay cool sign, symbolizing there is now a bond between them. And as difficult as this was for Vegeta to attach himself emotionally, he does indeed try and spend time with Trunks and Bulma. He trains Trunks because as a father, that's all he knows due to his lifestyle, a fighting father, and we have to give him that leeway. Perhaps in the seven years, these things became that important to him that he would not allow anyone to take it away. And so, he trains hard to ensure he could protect them and the Earth. And due to Goku not being around, I guarantee that Vegeta felt it was now up to him to deal with any major problems or villains if they arrived. And this is supported later on during the grand sacrifice against Majin Buu. Furthermore, during the battle with Kid Buu, during Vegeta's epic speech to Goku, he admits Goku is number one and he also admits that he also has something to protect. And that adds to why Vegeta trained hard. Vegeta trained all those years after Cell because he wanted to surpass the strongest power in Gohan, naturally as a Saiyan impulse, and to restore what pride he had lost in the Cell games. But more importantly, knowing Goku was never returning again, he had a much more valued motivation in those seven years, and more important than his pride. He trained hard in the times of peace, to become the new protector of Earth in case evil ever returned. To ensure he had the power to beat someone to the likes of Cell's power. Because Vegeta loved his family and would do whatever it took. 
protect them. Just to showcase how his mentality changed, Goku returns and he asks Vegeta in the tournament if he wants to go and watch the youths fight. And Vegeta agrees. And if you think about it, this is totally a different Vegeta. If Goku recommended anything casual in the past, Vegeta would have told him to get lost. But why is he going with Goku this time? It is because of Trunks. And this further strengthens how he's slowly been changing his priorities ever since defending Trunks after Cell killed him. But it wasn't until Goku arrived back for one day that Vegeta's old Saiyan blood began boiling once again. And what was the cause of this? Vegeta never expected Goku to return, so why did he act the way he did? Well, it's simple. When Goku died, he left Vegeta feeling empty. And at that moment, he had to adapt and change for his own welfare. But when Goku returned, it was almost as if he reawakened the old Vegeta inside, like some unfinished business. And Vegeta caved into it, almost like regressing inner growth. Even in some comic relief moments, he was trying to live through his son when Trunks beat Goten, rubbing it in Goku's face that he is better than Kakarot to some degree. The rivalry was still there at that point, albeit in a small portion, but it was brewing at that point and it surfaced greatly when he got the chance to fight Goku in the tournament. He wanted to fight Goku to at least restore some of that lost pride years ago, as demonstrated in his epic dialogue, but Vegeta never truly lost who he became over those seven years. He did not truly believe he wanted to be that evil Vegeta once again. All of that was a front. It was like skeletons in the closet and he had to get rid of it. And fighting Goku was the only way for him to do it and set himself free from his old ways. To find out if that really was his motivation anymore. Vegeta loved Bulma and Trunks even whilst fighting Goku. But he had to let his hair down this final time. His previous life and goals were taken away from him when Goku died. The whole Majin Vegeta phase was a moment of realization to him, of what he truly cared about in those times. It was Vegeta versus Vegeta. Sure, he was still the arrogant, cocky asshole when he needed to be, but the old Vegeta's ambitions were gone and he grew into a stronger person inside and out. And this is all justified when Vegeta knocks out Goku. He sensed Majin Buu's power and he knew the truth. He knew he was carried away with his old inferior ambitions of fighting Goku. It was nothing of importance to who he had truly become in terms of a family man. Knocking Goku out proved a few things. Number one, he didn't want to kill Goku like he used to. Number two, he didn't feel Goku was as important anymore compared to the bigger threats in life. And three, the most important, he wanted to fight Majin Buu himself. Not out of Saiyan pride, it was because he felt it was his responsibility as Earth's protector. And also due to it being his fault Buu was hatched. He felt Goku and Gohan always were the ones saving the Earth, whilst he just remained in the backseat watching. But now, he was the one who was alive. He was the one with the family to protect. It was his time to save the world from evil. And Vegeta wanted his heroic moment once and for all because he probably felt inferior, not in terms of power, but morality. After being around Goku and his friends for so long, he wanted to prove himself to himself. To further support this, that all of the Majin Vegeta persona was bullshit, was due to the fact he sensed Gohan's key had vanished, and he said he was sorry. He truly cared about Gohan, and had developed emotion for others, despite him never wanting to show it in front of anyone and he damn sure never wanted to show it in front of the returning Kakarot. Compare this to years ago, when he didn't even care if Gohan would die. Vegeta's death against Majin Buu symbolized who he had become. He says goodbye to Trunks, Bulma, and Goku, and I felt this was partly to level the score with Goku's death against Cell. Seeing Goku dying without fear, how can the inferior feeling Vegeta ever match that? Well, he also had to show no fear. Vegeta's death against Buu was how he wanted it. He chose it and constructed his own destiny. Why else would he say goodbye to Kakarot if he held a grudge against him? He didn't. He realized this after seven years and through the Majin Vegeta phase. That even when Goku returned to resurface his old emotions, it still wasn't enough to overpower the stronger caring man that he had become. And those old emotions were petty in the bigger picture of life. When Vegeta's halo disappeared and he came back to life, that was a big turning point. Vegeta didn't want to become a good guy. He didn't wish for the people of Earth to come back to be a good guy. No, no, he did those things because that's who he truly became. He could have wished for immortality, but that sort of power didn't fit with who he was anymore. The respect Vegeta showed Goku during that fight with Kid Buu helped Vegeta a lot in terms of his acceptance and who he was. He no longer lied to himself, he faced the truth, and that was huge for his character. He was more at peace with himself. When Kid Buu was defeated, his story from villain to hero became complete. The Vegeta we saw at the end of Z and in GT was a true showcase of character development. The family man who could still kick your ass. His morals were in the right place, even more than Goku's. 